Hey guys, welcome back to this tutorial on Unity 3D and manipulating objects. In the last tutorial, we left off with camera navigation and why that was important was because in order to select objects that we wanted to manipulate, we needed to get our camera in the right view and in the right position to do that. So in this tutorial, we're going to run through manipulation of objects and things like that. So let's go ahead and get started. So if I go ahead and select something, like let's say this rock, all I do is left click it. It's as simple as that. If I wanted to make multiple selections on things, all I do is left click and drag. And as you see, the more I drag around, the more I'm going to select and more things start happening. Well, right now you see like this little blue wireframe thing, kind of like water looking stuff going on in, in this selection. Well, anything dynamic comes to life. So it's pretty pretty neat, but um, you know if you wanted to select a, a group of things and move these all around, all you would use is these manipulator tools. Well, we're going to only manipulate one object right now, but the same thing we talk about you could do to a group of objects as well. Anyways, so these manipulator objects, you got Y, X, and Z. If you look at this thing called the transform gizmo over here, you'll notice that it's all course color co coordinated and you have your Y is green, X is red, Z is blue. Typical standard 3D coordinate stuff. So now if we wanted to make like let's say this thing a floating rock. Well I've never seen a floating rock so I don't know if there's su such thing and uh, chances are there's not. That'd be uh, against all rules of gravity but again let's say for demonstration purposes this works out really well. So we just move this in the X direction we affected its position we manipulated its position say we're gonna ma manipulate its Z position now so let's just move that back in the Z direction now why did it turn yellow that's because whatever we select handle we select this manipulator it's going to turn yellow that way we know it have it. we know we have it selected so quickly running through this if you wanted to rotate you'd come up to these tools right here this is going to be you know this is going to be just your move, your position. This is going to be your rotation. And this is going to be your scale. You could also do these exact same transforms and manipulate these. As you see, this is the same manipulator we have, a little color coded manipulator. We have this in our inspector's property is, or panel as well. So, again, if you wanted to affect the position, just roll your mouse over either the X, Y, or Z and drag up or down whichever you want to increase the values or decrease the values in and you'll see it moved around as we just saw it and if you wanted to get some kind of precise values let's say you wanted this to be at 20 all you do is type in 20 it return and there you go you can get as precise as you would like now same thing applies for rotation we could use that tool that we looked at a minute ago or we could just come in here and we could rotate this and as you see it's kind of like spinning around it's rotating around the Y axis so if it was rotating around the X it would kind of do like a circle around here or a circle around the Z if it was rotating around the Z you know pretty straightforward stuff now let's say we wanted to scale this in a direction same situation just come here start moving the scale around and you're really gonna see it when I transform the, the Y right here you see it kinda you know scales out a little bit and with the Z it scales pretty large as well so now we have this big rock that's like floating in the middle of our scene and you know pretty straightforward stuff what, what we have is it has a name of it has a name of Big Rock B. Now, let's say if we wanted to change this to this rock and give it a different name. Just type it in the inspector, hit return. Simple as that. Now, with this rock selected, let's see, let's close this panel. Oops, let's close this panel up a little bit. All right. You know, if we start selecting around to different things, it's going to pull up in our hierarchy. Now, the way the hierarchy works, it's a parent to child relationship. If we select everything in the group, 
you notice we selected all the rocks. Or you can come in here and select individual rocks because right now the rocks, it, this group of rocks is apparent to all these child rocks. Nothing really crazy about that. Let's say though we decided this rock doesn't fit well within the rocks group and we say it's part of, let's say we're going to say it's a lamp. Let's drag this to the lamps. Actually, we're gonna, yeah, we're going to drag it to the lights, actually. So now it's no longer in the rocks category. It's in the lamps category. So if we select lights, I'm sorry, lights, now you're going to see we have you know, our directional lights going on. We have some sound selected as well. Too, as well. Actually, the sound isn't selected. We just have our directional light, uh, our fake directional light water, and our light flare, these things that you see here, and then we have our rock. Now we can individually select each of these or our, we can individually select our rock, but again, this is how the hierarchy works. It's a parent to child relationship. And if you wanted to select multiple things and not everything, you know, lights would, if we select the lights, it would select everything. But if we wanted to select maybe the directional light water and the light flare on the rock, all you do is click on one, shift click, and then it's going to select those three things. Now, nothing, nothing too crazy here. Nothing I'm sure you guys have not seen before. Now, if you wanted to select multiple different things that weren't you know necessarily in a row all you do is hold your command or control key down and it would start selecting those for you, you know one at a time through however many you wanted to select alrighty so that's all there is about you know using that again you can also change if you select an object you can change your pivot you know this this is just where the tool handle is placed at the active object so depending on what you have selected you know this changes your pivot point you can center it nothing you know again global you can change to local you know makes it local to the object or global to the scene no again and we're just going to run through a couple more of these other options um actually we're running out of time what i'm going to do in the next tutorial i'm going to finish running through some of these different options that are remaining so you can get you know, again, even you know, deeper with the interface and become one with the interface, so to speak. Uh, you know, it sounds it sounds cliche or whatever, but at the same time, if you're not real comfortable with the interface, you're not going to make it. So, we'll see you in the next tutorial. If you need more help, visit youtube.com forward slash user forward slash fredicate and visit our you know fredicate.com. Visit me, Junda J is my profile name. If you need more help, questions, anything like that, I'd be happy to help you. Just drop me a line. And again, we'll see you in the next tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this.